1955, Emmett, a 14-year-old black boy from Chicago, was kidnapped, brutally beaten, and lynched in Mississippi after he was accused of whistling at a white woman at a grocery store. His body was thrown into a river and found days later. The body was so badly damaged that we couldn't hardly just tell who he was, but he happened to have on a ring with his initials. The men charged in Emmett's killing, Roy Bryant and J.W. Milam, were acquitted by an all-white, all-male jury. And though they later confessed, no one served any time. His mother, Mamie Till Mobley, was thrust into the media spotlight and spoke out on national television. Well, the whole trial was just a farce, and, but the verdict was, was the one that I had expected to be given. She held an open casket funeral, and in allowing his tortured body to be photographed, brought public attention to the case, profoundly shaping the civil rights movement. For him to have died a hero would mean more to me than for him just to have died. And I know that his life can't be returned, but I hope that his death will certainly start a movement. There are still physical reminders of his death. Many of these structures are easy to miss or not fully accessible. This roofless, crumbling building was once Bryant's grocery and meat market where Emmett encountered Carolyn Bryant Dunham, the shopkeeper, in 1955. You could drive right past it and not see it, save for the marker to its side. Emmett was kidnapped from his uncle's house and brought to this barn where he was brutally beaten and tortured. The barn's current owner, Dr. Jeff Andrews, has maintained the structure, upgrading the exterior. He allows people to visit, but it's unmarked. The Tallahatchie County Courthouse in front of you was the site of the murder trial. So when we walked inside of the courtroom, four of us were sitting side by side. And as we looked forward and we could look at the courtroom like it is now, it was exactly like it was in 1955. When Mrs. Till and Congressman Charles Diggs walked in. I believe they walked to the right and they took a seat up where the African-American reporters were. For 50 years, our community wanted to forget what took place here. And it wasn't until the community finally came together across racial lines and offered the first apology uh, that we began work on restoring our courthouse back to the way that 1955 and opening up the Emmett Till Interpretive Center across the street. Outside the courthouse, there's now a sign to mark the murder trial on one side. On the other side, there's a Confederate monument. It was put up in 1913 during the Jim Crow era. 